In order to become a stronger cyclist, you need to do a certain amount of low intensity training. And you probably knew that already. But how long should your endurance rides be? The one thing you need to be aware of is that the stress imposed on your body to maintain a given power output changes with the duration of that work. Imagine that you're going for a long ride on your indoor trainer at a fixed power output. Let's say 200 watts. Now the first hour of producing those 200 watts are probably going to take a different toll on your physiology compared to the third hour or the fifth hour, even if you're riding at the exact same power. Now this comes with some practical consequences that are worthwhile considering. There's a study from 2022 that neatly demonstrates how your training intensity zones may actually change during your workout. Stevenson and colleagues had 14 trained cyclists and triathletes perform a ventilatory threshold 1 test, or VT1. They then had the athletes ride their bikes for 2 hours at a constant low intensity power before repeating the VT1 test. And two very interesting things happened. The first thing that happened was that throughout the ride, the heart rate of the athletes drifted gradually upwards. On average, heart rate was about 8% higher at the end of the session compared to at the beginning. Now this is a sign that the body now needs to work harder in order to maintain the same power output. The second thing that happened was that when they retested VT1 at the end of the session, the power at which VT1 occurred had now dropped considerably. On average, VT1 power was now 21 watts lower or about 10% lower. And this is suggestive that the border between moderate and low intensity training has now shifted considerably downwards and it did so in only two hours. Now think about what this means for your low intensity rides. Imagine you're setting out to do a long low intensity training ride and you aim to ride in the upper range of your low intensity power zone. This study suggests that that power may in fact represent moderate intensity training in just a few hours. Now think about the recovery cost associated with riding at moderate intensity for such an extended period of time. It would certainly be a lot longer than if you did a true low intensity training ride. And this is of course the landmine that a lot of athletes step right into. They keep doing their low intensity training rides too hard, they keep repeating that process, they don't get sufficient recovery in between their interval sessions, and as a result, they end up overreaching and underperforming. In summary, the first takeaway is that your training intensity zones in terms of power probably aren't fixed. Instead, they may actually change with the duration of your ride. And at this point, you're probably thinking, well, what do my intensity zones look like later on during a ride then? Unfortunately, I don't have that answer for you. It will probably depend a little bit on your training status, but at least if you monitor your heart rate throughout your endurance rides, then you will at least get some level of ID when you're starting to work harder. It's probably safe to assume that for each hour you're adding to your low intensity training ride, the recovery cost of that extra hour is going up. And that's something that's probably worthwhile to factor into your planning and recovery.